हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट दी थर्ड वेंट्रिकल वेंट्रिकल मींस कैविटी सो इट मींस दिस थर्ड वेंट्रिकल इज ए कैविटी इन द ब्रेन एंड वेयर एग्जैक्टली इन द डाइनसेफेलोन ओके सो थर्ड वेंट्रिकल इज ए कैविटी ऑफ द डाइनसेफेलोन इट लाइज वेयर इट लाइज बिटवीन द टू थैलेमस ओके सो सपोज this is one thalamus here one other thalamus is here and in between that this this cavity is there that is known as the third ventricle okay this is the third ventricle both side what is there thalamus if you will see in this picture from the lateral side so upper side this c shaped ventricle we have the lateral ventricle and this we have the third ventricle and anterior to the cerebellum we have the fourth ventricle okay so this is the lateral ventricle this is the third ventricle and this is the fourth ventricle all these ventricles are connected by some foraminas or the aqueducts okay suppose we have the two ventricle this is the two lateral ventricle are there and one we have third ventricle and downside what we have fourth ventricle all these ventricles are connected so lateral ventricle is connected with the third ventricle or communicating with the third ventricle and third ventricle is communicating with the fourth ventricle now see the lateral ventricle is connected with the third ventricle through interventricular foramen what is there interventricular foramen okay so this is the interventricular foramen and also known as the foramen of monro and downside it is connected with the fourth ventricle through this duct and this duct is known as the cerebral aqueduct what is that cerebral aqueduct also known as the duct of selvius duct of selvius why this communication is required because csf will flow in these foraminas so so from the lateral ventricle csf will come to the third ventricle from the third ventricle it has to go to the fourth ventricle and then fourth ventricle will continue as the central canal so now correlate with this diagram here so we have this this one is the lateral ventricle and this is the third ventricle and fourth ventricle so this communication you can see between the lateral and the third ventricle this is known as the interventricular foramen or foramen of monroe third ventricle is connected with the fourth ventricle through this duct this is known as the cerebral aqueduct now we will see the boundaries so now we are seeing the medial surface of the cerebrum okay so in the medial surface we have to identify some structure and we have to see where exactly the third ventricle lies can you identify this structure this is the corpus callosum here so by looking at the corpus callosum this is the corpus callosum we can say this is the medial surface and now i will zoom this picture and we will see where is the third ventricle so guys this green color structure sorry this green color structure you are seeing this is the third ventricle here okay so above this cavity you can see this cavity this is the lateral ventricle and posterior side and down side we have this this cavity is the fourth ventricle this is third ventricle okay so now you can see there is a foramen which is connecting fourth ventricle with the third ventricle this is the foramen interventricular foramen and this is the third ventricle and third ventricle if you see it is continue it is connecting with the fourth ventricle through the cerebral aqueduct 
now we will see the boundaries so if you have identified the third ventricle you should remember this upper side we have the roof and below side we have the floor and this is the anterior wall and posterior side we have the posterior wall so we have to study the boundaries in four part we have the anterior wall one by one we will study all the parts so anterior wall so guys this full is the anterior wall here so what are the structure you will identify we have one first one is the anterior column of the fornix what is this so this is the anterior column of the fornix and next structure what we have we have the this dotted line so we have taken this section sagittal section so what you will identify here the dot like structure that is the anterior commissure okay this structure is the anterior commissure next structure we have this one this line this is extending like this one this is what this is the lamina terminalis lamina terminalis so you can see all these structure these structure are forming what these structure are forming the anterior wall of the third ventricle now we will see the posterior wall so what a st structure will form the posterior wall we will see that so posteriorly we have to come to this region so posterior side this you can see this is the pineal gland what is that this is the pineal pineal gland you can see and if you'll see the pineal gland if we have structure like this is the pineal gland and it has the two structure one is going above side and one is going down side okay so this is the superior lamina and this is the inferior lamina in this picture also you can see this we have the one nucleus or commissure in the superior lamina and what is this commissure this is the habenular commissure habenular commissure so it will connect the nuclei of the habenular with the other side and in the lower side we have the posterior commissure so posterior commissure is related with the inferior lamina and habenular commissure is related with the superior lamina of the pineal gland and also if you go from more posterior side this is the we have seen this structure this is what this is the cerebral aqueduct so all these structure whatever you are seeing these will form the posterior wall so what are the structure heavy lunar commissure is there pineal gland is there posterior commissure is there and cerebral aqueduct so guys next structure is roof roof if you will see this is this is the thalamus is there <coughs> and the upper limit of the thalamus if you will see this part then roof is by the ependyma ependyma that stretch across the upper limits of the two thalami so this is the roof here okay so this one is the roof upper limit of the thalamus now structure in the floor floor is the lowermost part here so structure from anterior to posterior side we have to see this one is the optic chiasma here second structure is the we will include this stalk of the pituitary along with the infundibulum okay this is the infundibular stalk along with the tuber cinerium 
So we write both together tuber, cinerium, and infundibulum. Infundibulum is what pituitary stalk. So this is the pituitary gland is there. So above this part, this is the infundibulum. Then this this we have the what is this? This is the mammillary body here. We have the two mammillary bodies. Then this dotted line you can see here. This is the posterior perforated substance. Posterior perforated substance. So this is pierced by the posterior cerebral arteries. And one last structure, this we have seen the this is the midbrain. So this portion of the midbrain we call it as tegmentum. What is this? Tegmentum. Okay, tegmentum of the midbrain. So these are the structure you will find out in the flow region. So what is this first structure is the optic chasma, then tuber cinerium and the infundibulum then we have the mammillary bodies then we have the posterior perforated substance and then we have one part of the midbrain that is the tegmentum and all these floor structure if you'll see all these are uh, the content if you'll see in the interpeduncular fossa now we have left with the lateral wall so this whatever structure we have seen this full is the lateral wall so whatever structure you will see that side they will form the lateral cus so this is the hypothalamic sulcus and why it is it is important because it is extending from the interventricular foramen till the cerebral aqueduct and this sulcus will divide the lateral wall into the upper part and the lower part upper you can see upper larger part and lower smaller part so this upper portion if you'll see it is formed by the thalamus and also you will see if i will remove all these you are seeing this cut portion this is the interthalamic adhesion interthalamic adhesion is there and lower part is formed by the hypothalamus so all these structure you are going to see in the lateral wall so we have the hypothalamic sulcus thalamus and the hypothalamus so this is all about the lateral ventricle so once again the anterior wall is by the anterior column of the fornix anterior commissure lamina terminalis floor is by the optic chasma infundibulum and the tuber cinerium mammillary bodies posterior perforated substance and tegmentum posterior wall is by the habenular commissure pineal gland posterior commissure and the lateral wall is formed by the thalamus hypothalamic sulcus and hypothalamus and roof is by the ependyma that stretches across the upper limits of the two thalami thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video please like subscribe and share the channel